Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros. And today we're actually checking out a full gaming setup that is actually sold from Newegg by a third party seller. Believe it or not, there's an entire setup in this box. A PC, a monitor, and a keyboard and mouse, all for $600. Is it worth picking up? Well, we're gonna open it up and see what's inside. Well, we kinda already did, but you know what? We're just gonna do that again and act like we didn't see anything. But before we do that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Deep Cool and their CK560 case, which comes comes with four pre-installed fans, three of which are ARGB, a ventilated front panel designed for great airflow, a spacious interior with support for up to a 360mm radiator and six 120mm fans, a USB Type-C port on the front I.O., and an overall very clean look that will make your next gaming PC turn out great. Learn more by checking the link in the description down below, and special thanks again to Deepcool for sponsoring today's video. So this system right here is supposed to have the keyboard, mouse, monitor, and the actual system, which is supposed to be just like a small form factor system, but we'll actually see in a minute. You know, we gotta keep some surprises for you and for us, but hey, this is basically like your option if you really don't wanna build something yourself and you need everything ready to go, and you know, you're just, hesitant about using our epic PC selling business, PCBros.tech, um, you know, we recommend that. But hey, this could actually be a really good bang for buck. We might find that it's better than something we have, so there's only one way to find out. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Opening time. So here we have a, ah, it's, this is a monitor. It's mm -hmm. an E23 18H. I wonder if it's new. Um, we have a, I've actually seen this before, BTO. BTO. I don't really know exactly like what else they do, but I know I've seen their keyboards and their mice. They're really cheap. Like it doesn't get much cheaper than that. Uh, we have a UPS Express. Let's let's see what's in here real quick. I'm gonna guess like our instructions and maybe our actual power cord and stuff are in here. Whoop. Is that correct? Yep. And a mouse. And we got our we got our BTO optical mouse. <laughs> we got our power cord and we have. Amazon? Renewed, renewed by Amazon, sold what? on Newegg, what? What, so this is actually a, huh, I wonder if this is like an Amazon renewed. Like if they're actually the ones who sell, does Amazon sell on Newegg? Is there some type uh -oh. of, some type of money laundering scheme there we is. found? It's conspiracy. Conspiracy. All right, but anyways, let's go ahead and get out this monitor. As you can see, we have not actually like opened any of this stuff. We just opened the main box just to see like what was in it. Um, so the monitor, I mean, it looks it looks to me like it's new. I could be wrong, but like it doesn't look like it's been retaped. And then our PC is right here, I think. Oh wait, why is, it, why is there two pieces? Oh wait, this is just uh, foam. Yeah. So they use like expanding foam, and look, our PC is right there. And it looks it's actually a newer Dell. It's an Optiplex 5040. But let's go and open the monitor first. You know, we got we got to save the best for last. We can't can't get ahead of ourselves too much. But I do like that that PC. Is it newer Optiplex? Did you say it was a fourth gen i5? Sixth gen. Sixth gen, yeah, that makes more sense because I'm like, I feel like I've not seen that Optiplex in a long time. It's definitely a little more rare to find, um, like, I'd say f something after fourth gen because obviously there really wasn't a fifth gen. So, you know, you're not going to see a lot of fifth gen CPUs out there. All right. You think it's, it's like new? a new monitor, yeah. I would say Dude, it's that new. looks new. I mean, that, and I'll say it did some really good refurb packaging. It's looking pretty new. So it looks like we have um, full stand kit. I'm guessing it's base amountable because there's a, a cover there. It comes with display port. Nice. Interestingly enough, is this actually a decent monitor? I think it's pretty, yeah, like. It's broken now. Um, broken now. Okay, okay. It's a little dusty. I don't know, yeah, I don't know. I don't, this can't be new. There's no covering no, or anything on it, right? No, it looks pretty dusty. So it probably is renewed. Yeah, right? it's just weird that maybe it's new um, like materials with it, but they show how to put on the stand. It is the bright number. It's the E2318H. So I'm assuming it's a 23.6 or whatever that weird size. This is definitely like a 16 by nine, like widescreen 1080p, I would assume. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we have a power port and it actually has VGA and display port. Really random connectors. Normally you're only gonna have VGA and HDMI. And then like DisplayPort, they say for the higher refresh rate monitors, but I'm not gonna complain. I like DisplayPort. So I think now it's time to actually open the gaming PC. Gaming, quote, gaming. 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 Now it actually, if the specs match like what, what it says it was, then it should be pretty good. But then the real test is gonna be, does it blue screen? Cause I know we see that a lot. Matt and I check out a lot of pre-builds from a lot of pre-built companies. And when you go to the cheap ones, I don't know what happens, but they must just be using some shoddy parts because we always have blue screen issues, but <laughs> massive instructions on the side. Power cord, it is going, that is a, well, 
That's a US connector. It looks like going into an EU plug. Interesting. Why did, why did they use that picture? I don't know. They did though. And then they show us to use the display port and the graphics card, which the graphics card is? RX 550. RX 550. That's actually a really good card um, for the price in this whole build right now. So let's go ahead and peely peely our tapey tapey off here. Our tapey tape. Tapey tapey. Tapey tapey. Okay, so the actual computer itself, I can see our graphics card. It does in fact have a display port and HDMI. We have a lot of USB 3s in the back, which is really nice to see in case you guys want to, you know, hook up your Oculus to it or anything. Uh, looks like we have two charging USB 2s, Ethernet. We have our, you know, we're not going to touch that. Our nine pin serial port, uh, multiple adapters in the back. As the picture said, though, ignore these because you got to plug it in here. This is our public service announcement. We have a single audio jack in the back that's just for speaker. Uh, and then we have a combo jack in the front. That's kind of interesting. So there's not actually like a single headphone jack. Uh, two USB 3s. Uh, USB 2 charging, a normal USB 2 power, not power. Well, there's power, but then there's also a DVD drive. Let's just open it How's up. it open? We, we gotta open up. This is always the exciting part. Man, this thing is clean, dude. Now you can see the first downside to this system. This is all it has. Ooh, 500 gigabyte Seagate Barracuda. By the way, guys, at the end of the day, some of these names sound really cool and hard drives. You got Fire Cuda, you got, you got the Seagate Barracuda, you know, Western Digital Blue. They're all, all hard drives are slow. Just keep that in mind. So there's no SSD in this, right? Nope. So no that. SSD. Um, we're gonna go ahead and take this out. There's probably going to be, is it 12 gigs or eight gigs in the system? That's a good question. I think it's we don't eight. Know. Right, I think well. the listing said eight. I can verify real quick. Though. We can We can pop it out. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. It is ready? eight gigs. I mean, it's it says a single eight. stick though. Oh, so we have a single stick of SK Hynix. It's a good brand, but it's only 16. Would this be DDR4 actually? It's six gen, so it should be. I know that they kind of did the back and forth thing yeah. though, right? Where mm -hmm. you could, I think you could have a DDR3 six gen build. Uh, eight gigs, PC3L, 12800U. I'd have to look up this part number to know. So here's a good old classic trick to check if you have DDR4 or 3. This is DDR3. Oh, it is. So yeah. if that pin lines up perfectly, that hole right there, we know what we have, and that's DDR3. Okay. This is actually one of the first 6 gen builds I've seen that actually has DDR3. Um, and do you think this is actually worth, Matt, like taking this off and checking, or do you just want to plug it we'll in? We'll just plug it in. All it says on the listing is 6 gen i5. I would imagine like an i5 6600 or 6400 or something like right. that. It could be There's a, a 65 even. too, yeah. So it's wide range of i5s, but they're all within the same spec, just a quad core processor. And then it looks like, okay, yeah, I see 550. It's a 550D. That yeah. is, um, I don't remember, we've done some builds with the 550D back in the day. It's an OEM card, and I think it has a slightly less for, uh, frequency to it, and those are all two gig, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think they have a four gig version of it. So, single eight gig stick. We don't know what i5 yet, but it is DDR3. I think that's a drawback that's not DDR4. It does have a 500 gig hard drive and as a 550D. We'll have to see how it does in game. We'll have to see exactly what CPU we have, but overall, is it worth it for the money so far? I think so. So we're gonna go ahead and do is put this whole setup together and just game on it, install some games and see how it works as a whole unit. All right, guys, after waiting forever for everything to download, we are now gonna be benchmarking this PC. First up, we have Fortnite, but before we dive into Fortnite, or as we're diving into Fortnite, we are running on performance mode. I'll go ahead and show you all the settings real quick. Fortnite just had to move the settings bar up there. It's really confusing me. We are gonna do medium view distance, medium textures, low meshes on performance mode, and we're gonna go ahead and queue up for a solo match. Uh, the audio is coming from the built-in speaker on this PC, so if you can hear that, there you go. Um, but yeah, this thing does come with a 6th gen i5, as you mentioned, is an i5-6500, which is just a quad-core processor, so it's not the greatest thing in the world, but for games like Fortnite and other esports titles, it should be perfectly adequate. Now, the one thing that is not adequate, in my opinion, is that hard drive. That hard drive is so bad, so slow, so awful, just, just, you really need to have an SSD in the system. I, I, I've had hard drives that were faster than this. I think it's just a really, really bad hard drive, um, so getting an SSD would be a massive upgrade, and and honestly, some of the performance loss that we're probably gonna have here, like stuttering and loading in textures, I would probably pinpoint more on the hard drive than the actual uh, performance of the system with that RX 550. One other weird thing while we're waiting for things to load up and getting a couple stutters here and there is that the drivers for the 550 would not install. It looks like they already had drivers in there, but I couldn't find any sort of AMD control center. So I don't know if it's some special driver for this 550D, but we're just gonna run with what was installed out of the gate, how the system was if the average consumer just bought it and uh, was going with that. So right now we're looking at about 
five gigs of uh, RAM usage, the FPS is all over the place, but on most budget systems in Fortnite nowadays, you are gonna be stuttering as you drop in. That 550 is bouncing around between, well, all the way down 18% up to like 100%. I think there's a lot of bottlenecks in this system, but um, the main one I think is the hard drive and then the GPU. That i5 probably could handle a slightly better uh, graphics card if you did plan on upgrading this in the future. So we're gonna go ahead and drop into what seems to be a very hot spawn, maybe. There we go. And as you can tell, it is taking a while for things to load in. Again, I do accredit that mainly to that hard drive. We're on the remove frame limit, so you guys can actually see uh, the real FPS maximum of this thing. Got him, best doggo. You're done, bro. You're done. But 100 FPS inside, there is a few stutters here and there. Um, this thing did have like a crap ton of like Fortnite marketing material all over it, uh, which is pretty much what these like really cheap uh, systems aim for anyways. Fortnite is the kind of game that you would be playing on a really old PC like this. And the main reason people would want to be getting into PC anyway. But look at this, those textures, man. Those things are just taking forever to load in. And that I just have to believe that it is the hard drive that's causing a lot of those problems. Where'd you go? Got him, Sergeant Summer, nice. This keyboard and mouse is pretty not great either. The keyboard is definitely the cheapest thing I've ever seen, um, but it does get the job done if you have absolutely nothing to get you started, but I would highly suggest getting even like a Red Dragon keyboard and mouse combo. That'd be a major upgrade or investing in like a mechanical keyboard at some point in the future. But um, yeah, FPS is staying around 80 to 90, 70, give or take, pretty in line with most of the really cheap PCs we've seen here on the channel recently. So I'm not too disappointed in the performance, but it is something to keep in mind that that hard drive is gonna hold you back in terms of all uh, everyday tasks. And you could add more RAM as well. 16 gigs is starting to become much more beneficial in even these budget PCs when you're playing games like this. Oh God, the tracking on this mouse is so bad. Okay, had no shot there, but look at that. Fortnite gameplay, got a couple kills, definitely upgrade the keyboard and mouse. It's just, it's not great. Look at this mouse. This is, no, no, you don't game on this sort of thing. It's good to get you started, but gaming, eh, not so much. Let's go ahead and jump into another game, which will actually be a built-in benchmark of Rainbow Six Siege, just to give you all something to compare to other systems. All right, gamers, we are now in Rainbow Six Siege, and we're gonna be running the built-in benchmark on medium settings just to see what kind of performance we can get. Now, I would say this game would be more demanding than a Fortnite, but I still imagine we will get 60 FPS, hopefully, as long as uh, other parts of the system don't hold us back. So we're gonna run that benchmark real quick, see what the utilization looks like, and come back with an average number. All right, guys, it looks like we got an average of 79 FPS, and that GPU and CPU load is not too shabby. Um, the RX 550 was pretty much the bottleneck here, and the CPU is about 85% there. Um, but yeah, medium settings, you can definitely run this game. Man, this music is kind of crazy. Uh, but what we're gonna go ahead and do is test the game that we know we'll run on this, but we'll probably be a more practical uh, uh, game that you'd probably want to play on this system, and that is Minecraft, and we're going to load that up real quick. All right, guys, so I don't know if it's the window install or the hard drive or whatever it might be, but I've been trying to install Minecraft for the past hour or so, and every single time I launch the Minecraft launcher, I hit install, it just, it, it's frozen right here. And I decided, well, I might as well go to like the Microsoft Store version. No, if I hit Microsoft Store, look at that. And it just, it doesn't launch whatsoever. So I don't really know. I'm assuming it's the hard drive, because look at this thing. This thing is running at 100% disk usage, and this is all that's happening right now. Um, the hard drive is just really holding it back, and what I'm gonna do is leave this here, I guess, um, and come back in the morning, and if Minecraft happens to be installed, then we'll test Minecraft, but if not, man, this hard drive in this system is absolutely ruining the performance of this thing, because it would be much more capable, and probably cost them about the same. They're just throwing a 240 gig SSD instead of a 500 gig hard drive. Spend like $20 more and get something like like that and it would make such a better combo overall so yeah I guess we'll check back in in the morning and uh, go from there 
All right, guys, it is the next morning and we actually have Minecraft working. Uh, when I came in, it actually looks like the PC restarted itself, but then when I went back and tried to install Minecraft, it actually installed properly this time. We are loading into a new world right now and I will go ahead and show you all the settings. We are running on fast graphics and everything else is about the same. We have fast clouds, uh, render distance of 12 chunks, 120 FPS max frame rate, and we're just gonna run around real quick after everything is loaded in, which is still seems to be loading in a little bit. That i5-6500 is really getting pushed to 100% loading in all these chunks, which in Minecraft there is always that period of time where you're really loading in a bunch of stuff to start, and then once everything is settled in, as you can tell, the frame rate is pretty solid. There is some stutters here and there, but I would deem this playable for Minecraft. Um, you just gotta generate your world for the first time, and I think you'll be good to go. Um, but in recap of this PC, just based on benchmarks I've seen so far, it's okay for $600. The whole combo works as an office PC. Uh, the first thing I would definitely do is get an SSD. You can even keep that hard drive and just add an SSD as your boot drive. Um, and then after that, you have a functional setup and a bit all in and with everything, shipping and all that sort of fun stuff, you probably would have spent, oh, give or take $650. So, at that price point, it's not too bad in 2022. Um, could you do this on your own? Yes, you in theory could. You could find these Optiplexes and low profile 550s, upgrade them yourself, and probably do it all for around five to $400, $450, depending on how cheap you wanna go with the monitor. So there is definitely a premium of it being all put together, but that's any sort of business, and that's just kind of how it is. So um, overall, it's, it's a working package, and uh, yeah, I think it's actually pretty functional. So if you wanna pick this thing up, as always, link in the description down below being affiliate link and does help us out uh yeah let's bring jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick all right guys so we just got some benchmarking done in this beautiful setup and overall for the price seems pretty decent but there is one or two major drawbacks and that is this hard drive is is ancient i mean like we're talking like 5400 rpm speeds it randomly locks up randomly crashes applications will open and then close there's a good chance your windows will just become corrupted randomly so really really recommend opting for an ssd maybe there's other listings like this that are a little bit more that have a 240 gig ssd instead of a 500 gig hard drive another thing we recommend going for is adding another stick of ram because you only have one stick of eight gigs and yes the capacity Capacity is good, but the actual running in single channel is not good for gaming. You're losing about 10 to 20 FPS in most games from that. So overall, if you want to pick up this setup or any other setup that Newegg sells, we will leave some links in the description down below. They will be affiliate links. They will help us out. But overall, it was kind of interesting to see what you can get as an all-in-one package because we normally build our own setups. It's kind of cool to see that people are selling an all-in-one solution here for those who don't want to hunt around for individual parts. And uh, I think it's a pretty decent buy with a few upgrades here and there. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Bye -bye. And hey, did you know that we have a PC selling business and we're going to be adding another stick of RAM and an SSD to this system so that it's fast again. PC Bros. Zotacker is a PC selling business. So if you want to support us and also buy some really awesome PCs at great prices, check out our website, PCBros.Tech. See you guys later. Goodbye. Um, Boom. did you move that?